Welcome back to the Digilent Physical Computing Kit for LabVIEW tutorial series. I'm Sam Kristoff from LabVIEW Maker Hub, and in this section, we'll learn how to read the analog value from a potentiometer on the ChipKit WF32. In LabVIEW, I'll click Help and choose Find Examples. In Example Finder, I'll click Search and search for links. Then I'll double click the Analog Read One Channel example to open it. In the Serial Port dropdown, I'll choose COM4, which is our ChipKit WF32, and the AI channel I'll set to 13, which is connected to the potentiometer on the ChipKit WF32. I'll click the Run button to run the VI, and once LabVIEW establishes a connection to the ChipKit, I can rotate the potentiometer, and we'll see the value change on the graph. The ChipKit operates at 3.3 volts, so the value ranges from 0 to 3.3. Let's take a look at the code to see how this works. I'll click the Stop button, and then press Control e to bring up the block diagram. We use the Links Initialize VI to open a connection to the device. Then, inside the while loop, we use the Analog Read One Channel VI. We pass it a U8, which represents the channel we want to read from, in this case channel 13, and it outputs an analog value. Outside the loop, we close the connection to the device, and we handle any errors. Right now, we're displaying the analog value on a graph. But the way we change the value is by rotating the potentiometer. So let's change this graph to a gauge so we can see the rotation. I'll right-click on the graph and choose Replace, then Numeric, and then gauge silver. When I select that, the graph is replaced with a gauge, and I'll move it into place and make it a bit bigger. You can see by default, the value ranges from 0 to 10. But our voltage only ranges from 0 to 3. So let's see what happens when we run this. I'll click the Run button. And once LabVIEW establishes a connection to the chip kit, you can see rotating the potentiometer will rotate the needle on the gauge from 0 to 3.3. If we want to use the full value of the gauge, we can double click on the 10 and change it to 3.3. When we do that, all the points on the gauge update, and now the needle will move the full range of the gauge as we rotate the potentiometer. Think about how you could use a potentiometer to control the rate at which an LED blinks. Or maybe use the potentiometer value to determine how much to increment a counter each time a button's pressed. In the next section, we'll learn how to log data to a file. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects, and ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.